In France and Normandy, at the cemetery in Omaha Beach, today we had the honor to walk with the former ranger, Mr. Chuck Holton, and a story you do not want to miss. I'm Oscar Blue, live from France. Here is our report. A beautiful town in France, one of the most beautiful treasures in this beautiful country. Before we visited Normandy at Omaha Beach, and also before we visited the cemetery of Normandy in Omaha Beach, we went around this beautiful town that is located a few kilometers away from our destination. Historically known for the Battle of the Second World War, where more than 9,000 soldiers gave their lives for freedom. More than 9,000 souls of American soldiers gave their lives for their country. More than 9,000 soldiers gave the lives for the freedom of the world. It is beautiful, the entrance to the Normandy Cemetery. We were accompanied by former Ranger Chuck Colton, journalist and writer, and also Ben Berquam, journalist and correspondent for Real America's Boys News. But we had a special surprise with a young man by the name of Mark Tomlin. We arrived to this beautiful place. You can see the historical Normandy Beach. But when you walk in, you see the thousands of crosses in the most beautiful, significant cemetery dedicated to courage, freedom, and valor. It is a complete honor to be walking on the side of this beautiful cemetery where thousands of young men gave their lives for the freedom that the young men of today have. As a Mexican journalist, it was a blessing to be walking and to have the honor to document this historical cemetery. Oscar Blue live from Normandy and the cemetery in Normandy and Omaha Beach. Look at this behind me. It's incredible. I'm standing in sacred ground. I am privileged and I'm honored to the all my American audience. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be standing in front of these courageous men. Behind me, you will see the beach where they came in and they were basically attacked by the Nazi army as they were defending their freedom that were defending their country, that were defending their honor. It is time for the new generation to understand this, the ultimate sacrifice for the love and God and for your country. These men, young men, kids, gave everything for you to have the beauty and comfort of what the United States has and what the world has. At the glimpse of a mural, a mother is showing her daughter of the Omaha Beach, historically, we were standing in sacred ground. Behind us, there was a wall 
where every single part of this beautiful marble wall it had every single name of the more than 9,000 soldiers that they lost their lives at June 6 on D-Day. A peaceful sound now it's on the Omaha Beach you can actually see on the cemetery little flags of the United States on the bottom of the crosses which means that a visitor or family member came and also a mural of a rock which shows the entrance of that day on the attack on Normandy Beach Mark Tomlin a young man 20 years of age, born in Panama and also a U.S. citizen, a college student and a collaborator as video editor, before he left to document this trip at Normandy in Omaha Beach. Their family informed him that he had a great-great-uncle that gave his life then passed away in Omaha Beach on D-Day. For years, nobody has ever visited this grave, and it came down to the young man to discover the grave of his great great uncle on this historical cemetery. My great great uncle is buried here in D-Day and no one from our family has ever come to visit this cemetery so I'm the first one and today is the day we're going to visit. We're about to get in this golf cart here and go out to the grave. What they gave you? Tell they me. Gave, they gave me all his information, his data, his blood. The, the White House even signed some special thing here and I didn't even know this existed. How do you feel? So, so happy. This is amazing. It must my, be a proud moment. My grandma's going to be ecstatic. I'm so happy. <laughs> Go in the front, so whatever you want. Perfect. J. Uh, C. No. Oh, J. Oh, oh, oh. Just the numbers. Yeah. So. Let's have a look. J326. No problem. He's right in the middle of row three. Uh, so, how many of these do you do a day? Either zero or oh. up to seven or something like that. Okay. To be honest with you, it varies day by day, and we don't know you're coming. Yes. Uh, but we, we deal uh, and receive. Six to seven hundred families a year. Oh, wow. 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 And thirty-two memorials. Wow. Five of the memorials are in the states. None of the cemeteries are. The very first day has been funded by the American taxpayer. Wow. From nineteen twenty-three. Well, from nineteen. Yes. Yeah. Nineteen twenty-three onwards. They start. They took the first year as being nineteen seventeen when America joined the first entered the first world war. Wow. Nine thousand three hundred eighty-eight burials and an additional 1,557 names in the Garden of the Missing on the walls of the Missing. Wow. This is a multi-denominational chapel. This is the very first plot. These first two plots are the first two plots in the cemetery. The first burial took place 4th of November 1948. Only the family gets to enter the sacred ground of Normandy Cemetery. We did not know that we were about to witness something that barely few United States citizens are privileged to see. That is a sacred procedure that they do when a family member comes and visits their loved ones on this sacred ground. Traveled all those miles and take a picture of white marble because it's marble from north, north uh, eastern Italy, from Laza. It really makes it pop out. So that makes it pop out. It's very simple, but it's, it's a wonderful technique, I mm -hmm. think. 
So that's really well. And just behind the tag number. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So that's his service number. Look. remembers when he was when he was right before he left for war she was about four years old and he would play catch with her and roll the ball back and forth and she has a vivid memory of him smiling and laughing before he left and that was the last time she ever saw him he he made it almost a month after landing here on d-day and my his his father found out what had happened um, one day when they came with the flags and he saw them outside, he just knew that his son was dead. But none of the family was home. And so when he, the father saw, he found out and decided to not tell his family because he thought that maybe they had misidentified, maybe something was wrong. So he held out for about an entire month until July 4th and he just couldn't hold it any longer. And he told his wife um, and the sister at the time. We are in Normandy Cemetery and today, uh, as, as a Mexican, I feel really honored to be inside of the cemetery. We didn't know this, but Mark Tomlet has a great, great uncle that died on not Normandy Day, later on. Uh, and, you know, the battle went on not only in the 6th of June, he died later on on the 4th of July, but it's buried right here on the Normandy Cemetery, and he died when he was 20 years of age. First of all, Mark, I want to tell you, thank you so much for letting us be part of this. This is such an honor for me to be standing next to your great-great-uncle. How do you feel? Thank you so much. I, I really, Oscar, I feel a sense of peace knowing that we finally got to see the grave here in person. We've never, nobody from my family has ever come and ventured to this place, and to see it in person really impacts you hard. He was 20 years of age. You're 20 years of age. Yeah. You know, the new youth is, is really confused right now in the United States of America. How do you feel that responsibility, the way that he gave his life for his country, now you have that same responsibility at the same age? Yeah, I think the only thing different between me and him was simply the, the date in which we were born. It was a different, it was a different age. And I'm so grateful. I thank God every day for the opportunity that I'm alive in a free country as of right now. Okay. And I have the opportunity to go and do something with my life without being weighed down by the conflicts of war. And he didn't have that. So I want to to make the most of what he died for. You know, he, he, you, you made us be a part of something. They do a great celebration. They put some sand from the Normandy beach yes. on his grave, on his letters. And, 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 and on the back is his number, his tag number. Uh, thank you for letting us be a part of it. You know, what, what, how do you feel, how do you think your grand-grand-grandmother feels right now? I think she's very, 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 she's going to freak out when she actually sees this video because she'd asked me, Mark, you have to make sure you see that grave when you go. And I was like, I don't know if it's going to be possible. And this lovely gentleman here made it so that we could come out and see this grave. And, and I think she's going to be very, very moved. And just to correct that, it's her, it's her. His grandmother, not yeah. great-grandmother. So, yeah. so thank you so much, Mark, for letting us be part of this. Uh, God bless your dear heart. You're a really good kid, man. I'm, I'm really proud. Yeah. It's a really thank proud you, moment for me. Uh, Oscar Blue for Real America's Boys News. Ben Berkwan, Chuck Holton, and the Marky Tomlet right here in Normandy Beach. We left to our next location that it was located around 11 kilometers or 30 minutes from the Normandy Cemetery. We were going to the World War II Point du Hoc. It is a ranger monument that is located on a cliff eight miles west of Normandy American Cemetery, which overlooks the Omaha Beach of France. It was selected by the French to honor elements of the American 2nd Ranger Battalion under the command of Lieutenant Colonel James Reuter. Yeah. All across the land you can see signs of war. You can see also these huge bomb holes which they were surrounded by several bunkers of the Nazi military. As we walk through the first bunker, you can actually see the interior and also the overlook to the Normandy Beach. Mm -hmm. 
from the top of the bunker, you can actually look how the Nazi military had a clear advantage on the Ranger Battalion that they risked their lives for freedom, climbing the most dangerous cliff as Rangers lead the way to defeat the German military. This is actually the look that the German Nazi uh, military was that it was having. They were defending themselves against, you know, the Rangers that they were actually trying to take over this uh, place. Later on, they were defeated. But this is how it would look. And the artillery was consistently attacking on this little space right here. They see behind me. There's Normandy Beach. His name is Chuck Holton. He's a former retired sergeant ranger. He has done multiple coverages around the world. He has covered the migration issue and also world political topics. Who better than him to give us an explanation on what happened on June 6th on D-Day? We are in Normandy, France with my mentor, Chuck Holton. I look up to him a lot. Uh, and we're standing at a bunker. And this is so important because it was the epicenter of the this war uh, on Normandy Day oh, the and, and the invasion and Rangers lead the way for uh, you know what happened on that day. Can 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 you explain it to me? Yeah. That? So the story is that the second, second and fifth Ranger battalions were given the mission to take these cliffs, and that's because they're the premier light infantry unit in the U.S. military. The elite uh, special operations unit that they've become today started here. And they, they had to scale these cliffs using ropes that were fired with uh, big grappling hooks up onto these cliffs while the Germans were throwing grenades and throwing bombs down at them. And they succeeded. The reason they had to do that is because of this bunker we're standing on had an incredibly large coastal defense gun, and there's more that were in place around here. Those guns could have reached any ship within our view, and this was right in the center of the, uh, in the, the, movie, the invasion. Private and Ryan, That's you right. will see actually that. That's right, you gun. see that. That is that one. That's right. And when they got up here, the guns were actually gone, but they didn't know that at the beginning. So as, as they were getting ready to invade, the commander, the brigadier commander, a uh, brigadier general of the 29th Infantry Division, Brigadier General Coda, came to the, the 5th Ranger uh, battalion lead element, the ones that were going to be first on the beach, and said, what unit is this? And they said, we're the Rangers, sir. And he said, well, then, God damn it, Rangers lead the way. Wow. And that became, Rangers lead the way became the, the official motto of the U.S. Ranger Regiment to this day. But not only that, the example of service and sacrifice and courage that these guys showed uh, taking this, this cliff that we're standing on became sort of the culture of the U.S. Ranger Regiment. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something that you carry with you, I carry with me, long after I got out of the military. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really an honor to be right here with, uh, with the great Chuck Holton and standing in a bunker that who would have said, you know, one day I was in Tijuana, Mexico, and the next day I'm in Paris, you know, standing at a bunker in a really historical uh, place. Thank you so much, Chuck, for me, letting me be a part of this. Thanks for coming. Uh, Moscow Blue for Real America's Voice News in Normandy, France. From Normandy, France. Until next time, I'm Oscar Blue for Real America's Boys News. Stay safe, and remember, God's plan is our mission.